In the early 1800s, a great discovery was made in Jefferson, Georgia. It was a discovery that made medical history. Imagine a trip to the dentist without Novocaine. Imagine having your tonsils out without general anesthesia. That would really hurt. Well, this is the story of the very first painless surgery. In Jefferson, Georgia, on a spring afternoon in 1842, a group of men gathered in the office of Dr. Crawford W. Long. One of them, James Venable, was nervous. Dr. Long was about to remove a tumor from his neck, and all he could think about was how much it would hurt. But Dr. Long had an idea about how to stop the pain. He wanted to conduct an experiment with James as the guinea pig. Dr. Long conversed with James and suggested that if he inhaled the ether, he thought it would stop the pain. And James agreed to have one tumor removed on the afternoon of March 30th, 1842. Ether is a clear liquid that evaporates quickly. The vapor has a powerful effect on the body. It puts you to sleep. That's what makes ether an anesthetic. Ether is really a very complete anesthetic. Uh, it has four different aspects that, that give it its, its good qualities. It's one, it's an anesthetic. It puts people to sleep and they wake back up again. Second, it's an analgesic. It stops pain. Third, it has an amnesia quality. You don't remember the pain of the surgery. And fourth, it has a muscle relaxant aspect, which allows a surgeon to do uh, work easier. Although Dr. Long was experimenting on James, he had a good idea of what would happen. He had already tried ether on himself, and he saw that while under its influence, he felt no pain. To be able to alleviate the suffering and pain of sick people, that had been Crawford Long's dream since he studied medicine in New York. And when he was working in the New York City hospitals and seeing people suffering from pain of surgery, I think it was his wish, as it was most medical people of that time, to find a method to allay pain, but the usual statement was, there's nothing to stop pain and there never will be. Give me something for the pain. I'm sorry, son, we haven't got anything to give you. Today, it's hard to imagine surgery without anesthetics. Thank Dr. God. Wilson needs you in the room, Miss Hamilton. He's gonna take off that leg, better hurry. I'll be back. A scene in the movie, Gone with the Wind, shows a doctor amputating a soldier's leg. This scene is an accurate recreation of just how awful an operation would be without the ability to put people to sleep. Don't! Don't! Please! Where's the nurse? Compare this scene with James waking up from ether after his operation. James, wake up. The operation's over. James couldn't believe that his tumor had been removed. Dr. Long had to show it to him. The discovery of anesthetics opened a new frontier in medicine. I'm telling you, I didn't feel any pain. After anesthesiology, when you could put people to sleep, you could start doing surgery, you could start removing tumors or repairing uh, wounds in ways they couldn't do before. Uh, the, the problem that that created was that you opened the body up to infection. So they, in order to do those surgeries, they needed to have a sterile place uh, in order to operate. and that created the growth in hospitals. Hospitals in the 1800s were very different from today. Nobody knew about germs causing infection, so hospitals often weren't very clean. In the 1800s, straw might be on the floor. Uh, beds may not be changed uh, ever until, a, new, uh, until a, a patient died and a new patient came. Hospitals were places that poor people or people with contagious diseases went. It's not where most people got health care. But in the late 1800s, doctors discovered that germs cause infection. Soon after that, operating rooms became sterile environments, and hospitals became health care centers with medical specialists using high-tech equipment. That's when the cost of medical care went up. That's due in large measure to the scientific advances and the technical advances that have been made recently. It's very easy to see when you go in the hospital the results of these advances. The very complex machinery, all of these come at tremendous expense. Today's operating room is full of expensive new technology. 
and anesthesia has come a long way since Dr. Long poured ether on a towel. Now we use a lot of equipment to stop pain. Dr. Rob Introna is an anesthesiologist at the Medical College of Georgia. When Crawford Long first administered ether anesthesia, he had very little as far as equipment other than uh, a cloth to put over someone's face so that they could breathe uh, the anesthetic. But the equipment that we use is primarily designed to make sure that we maintain someone's breathing and, and, and all the other functions in the body. Ether isn't used anymore. There are newer and better anesthetics now, but the result is the same. The patient gets drowsy and goes to sleep. Meanwhile, the latest technology keeps track of vital signs, such as her breathing and heartbeat. This monitor here, we monitor your heartbeat, called the EKG. We can also monitor your blood pressure. All that information is fed into the computer. This is what's called a pulse oximeter, which measures continuously the amount of oxygen that's in your blood. So it gives us a lot of information. All the vital signs are used to help, one, administer the anesthetic, because all anesthetics, essentially, that are, are like all drugs. They're very, they're very good and very useful as long as they're used correctly. But like any drug, that if you use too much, you have, can have problems. And one of the reasons we monitor all your vital signs is to make sure that while you can't tell us that you're okay, we know that you're okay. All this technology helps surgeons concentrate on their work because the patient sleeps peacefully and safely, free of pain. It all began in Jefferson, Georgia, over 150 years ago, with a simple experiment in the office of Dr. Crawford W. Long. What anesthesia did for surgery is it provided the, the means or mechanism for surgeons to, to develop techniques that they couldn't have done operating inside the abdomen, for instance, operating inside the chest, doing all kinds of operations to help people, to heal people that they couldn't do before. Before anesthesia, some doctors would knock their patients out in order to perform surgery. 